Today we are going to set up a BL Touch auto bed leveling sensor on our Panicut Kinetica G2C that runs Riprap firmware. Chris here, back again with a little bit shorter video on a pretty specific subject, and this one's going to be on the Kinetica G2C board that we looked at a couple of months ago. This board does run Riprap firmware, and you can use the Duet DWC to control it. That's the wireless interface. And Riprap does the BL Touch and auto bed leveling a little bit different. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the sensor, cable it to the board, and we'll go through all the configuration items to get it up and working. So let's head to the hardware and I'll show you how to get everything cabled up correctly. So to start off, I am still using the Humera mount that Joe Kasha made, 3D printer noob. It does have a BL Touch mount right here. That is somewhat important what mount you're using because you're going to have to adjust the offset accordingly. But that's the setup I'm going to use today. I've removed some wires so you can see just a little bit better, but there are a couple of ways of setting this up. You can run it in mode 4, or you can run it in mode 9. And we'll talk more about what those are. So I'm going to set mine up in mode 9. We will leave the Z end stop switch intact, so we use that for homing, but we're going to use the probe just for the leveling. No matter what mode we use, we're still going to use these servo pins to control our BL touch. This side is the signal pin, this side is the ground pin, and you have your VCC in the middle. So from the front of the board to the back of the board, it'll be orange, red, brown. And now I'm going to move to the side of the printer because I think I can get you a little bit better shot of these pins. But these are labeled probe pins right here and we're going to use these two outside pins. This will be for the black and white wires that usually go to a Z minimum end stop like on a lot of other printers. I'm just going to hook mine up like this. On that outside pin, it's labeled Z in. That's going to be my white wire. The one right next to it is a ground pin. That's going to be your black wire. This will set up for mode 9. Mode 9 is the traditional BL Touch setup in RipRap firmware. But you can also use mode 4. Mode 4 is basically just a probe that's using the E0 end stop. A lot of these boards have those. And if you want to use that mode, you can switch these two wires over to this plug right here white wire here, black wire here. This is called the A stop. Technically, it's for E0, but that's for mode four. We're gonna stick with mode nine, so I'm gonna move it back. And hardware-wise, this should be all you have to do to add your BL Touch sensor. So the hardware config is really straightforward, but it is important to note, some of the BL Touch sensors have to manually be set from five volt to 3.3 you need to use 3.3 components on this board because some of those pins aren't five volt tolerant. So make sure you're using 3.3 volts. You have to solder some spots on some of the older BL touches to get them to work. On the newer ones like the 3.1, it handles all that for you. It's wired correctly inside to use either five volt or 3.3. Just a note, now we'll head to the configuration. And before we get started with my config, there has been a few other people help me figure this out, including Roy over at Panicut, and Ken, he sent me a lot of interesting information. And there is a lot of great info out here on the Duet site on what the probes do, what mode does what, but some of it can be kind of confusing, especially with this board. At some point, this version of RipRap should be rolled into the main version so we can upgrade to two and three versions. We're not quite there yet, but hopefully that'll come soon and it'll be just another branch in the firmware. But for now, we're just going to stick with 205RC1R. So the first thing we're going to do is go into System Editor and we'll take a look at Configuration.g. There's a couple things you have to set up to get auto bed leveling working in RipRap. In this configuration file, there were a few defaults like M558. This one was commented out, so it's not actually using that one, but be sure that you're not repeating commands. If there are repeats, either delete the old ones or comment them out with that semicolon in front. So the first command we're going to address is this M558. 
The P tells it which probe you're using. Again, we're going to run mode 9, so we're doing P9. H is the dive height. How far can we assume that we're going to go down when doing a probe? We're just going to leave it at 5. F is the feed rate that we're moving when we do the probe. And then T is the travel speed in between probes. So H5, F120, T6000, that's a pretty good initial setting to get M558 set up. So that's the Z probe config. Then we need to define a mesh grid. This is the grid it's going to use when it does its probing. For the Ender 3, we have a 220 by 220. It's actually just a bit bigger. But I have set my X to 15 and 195. Those are separated by a colon. But that says we're going to go in on X15, and our last probe all the way to the right will go all the way to 195. Same for the Y. So we're going positive Y in 15, and the last probe will be all the way at 195. S is for probe point spacing. This gives you an idea of how many probes you're going to do and how far apart they will be. I have set mine to 20. And then the P is the amount of probes. I've set mine to 5. So that should give you a 5x5, five five, and then that S20 sets how tightly they'll be grouped. These S and P settings do differ within certain versions of RipRap. So if you're doing this on a newer version, it might not be exactly the same, but it's going to work for this configuration. Then we need a G31. This is your probe offset. And like I told you before, this depends on the mount that you're using. The P command is your trigger value. On a BL touch, this is going to be something like sensitivity, but 500 should be good for this sensor. And then your standard offset. My probe is to the left and just a little bit behind the nozzle. So I'll set my X to negative 40 millimeters and my Y to negative 10 millimeters. Now your Z offset is the one that's going to have to be configured. I've got mine set to 2.5 millimeters and it does work well. But again, this is for Joe's mount. I'll show you how to tweak that on the fly and then you can come back and update these settings later. So we're good in configuration.g. This is all you have to set up. But if you're using this mount on an Ender 3, this should work just fine for you. But there are a few other things we need to tweak. So let's save these changes. We can go ahead and upload and reboot. Now that we're back up, let's head back to settings. We're going to do system editor again. And we need to create a couple of macros. So we have to tell the BL Touch how to deploy and how to retract. Because those settings that we just set up are going to utilize those. So you're going to need a deploy probe.g. If it isn't there, you can create it over here with new file. Let's have a look at mine. All it is in here is an M280 command. That sets servo position. But you have to know what pin your servo is on. And on the Panicut board, your pin is going to be 64. So we do M280, P64, and then we need to know where to position the servo. And to deploy the probe on a BL Touch, you're going to do S10. So that's all you need in the deploy file. We'll save that one. And we need a retract file. So you're going to create one called retractprobe.g. I have one right down here. Let's take a look. Same thing here. It's the same type of M280 command. You just have to send it an S90 instead to get it to retract. So M280, the pin is 64. S90 to bring the pin back up. That's all you need. Hit save. Now we should be ready to test out our bed leveling and make a map. So let's run some tests and we'll keep an eye on our printer while we do so. Let's home all and make sure everything's still working. Remember we still are using the micro switch for Z. We're just using the probe to build the mesh. And let's heat up our bed. I'm just going to do 60C. So the first thing we're going to do after the bed is up to temp, we're going to hit this auto bed compensation button. This will do a complete probing cycle of the bed. And at this point, during this bed level, your probe should be working correctly. If it's not deploying or retracting, go back and make sure that your files are correctly configured like I showed before. And the probing cycle is complete. We do get this warning down here. 
If you go to the G-Code console, you can reread those warnings. It's telling you that there is a substantial Z offset. With this probe, that's going to be kind of unavoidable. But it gives you the deviation. We're minimum 945, maximum 780. So a deviation in total of less than 5 hundredths. And that's not too bad. I've seen better, but I've also seen a lot worse. So we now have our height map CSV. Let's go back to machine control. And in the pull down next to auto bed compensation, we're now going to run the mesh grid compensation. This will produce the mesh grid alongside the height map, and then we can see what it looks like, see how lumpy the bed might be. Then we can go back to the pull down and take a look at our mesh grid height map. So we have one tricky spot there in the front right corner. You could probably smooth that out with the bed leveling wheel if you wanted to, but all in all, looks pretty nice. It's important to note when you hit this button, you're performing the calibration with the G32. When you hit this button, you're performing the compensation with a G29. Now with a lot of printers, you can probably just get away with running this once and saving it, and then maybe brushing up on it every once in a while if you see issues. But on i3 machines that I move around a lot, I usually do this every print. So that's up to you. But let's jump into the slicer real quick. I am using Prusa Slicer with their generic Ender 3 profile, but we'll jump into printer settings, and then we'll go to custom G-code. And if you'd like to run that bed level for every print, you just put your G29 in here. But if you just want to pull out a saved mesh, if you do G29S1, that will load your height map. So it won't do the probe over again, it'll just grab the one we already ran that is saved in the configuration. I do recommend though, if you do that, in your NG code, go ahead and do a G29S2. That way, after every print, it will turn that compensation off. If you're adjusting things, doing some things with your printer, that can confuse things if it's left on. But just remember to turn it back on in the start G code up here and you should be all set. Now let's start a quick print and adjust our Z offset if we need to. When the print starts, come over here to this pull down for the first time and make sure that this disabled is highlighted and available. If it didn't enable it correctly, it will ask you to enable it. So just make sure your start G code worked. We should be good here. And my first layer went down pretty nice because I adjusted that offset ahead of time. But if you need to make adjustments, you can go back to the DWC and under print status, you can lower it or raise it with this baby stepping. So if it's too close to the bed, bump it up five hundredths. If it's not close enough, bump it down five hundredths. And that will update automatically. But remember what your current offset is and you need to go add that to your Z offset. So back into settings, config.g. Just add that change to the G31 command right here. And then you'll be good next time you start a print. And that's all there is to it, setting up that VL touch sensor in RipRap firmware on this Panica Kinetica G2C board. Now there are a lot of different sensors that you can set up. They're done similar to this, maybe without the servo, but you can get it done for a lot of different ones. Check out all of the information on Duet site for the different modes you need to use. Also, you can do this on Duet boards on all the different types, but the pin configuration is just a little bit different, and we will visit that in another video soon. But that's it for this one today. Hopefully you enjoyed this quicker video, and I will see you very soon on the next one.